yes we are live oh awesome all right guys uh, awesome let's fix this yep i think this is good this is good all right my name is alfred ukane just in case you have not met me before and um i'm doing a series where i host different stakeholders from the food and agricultural industry and we get to talk about issues that borders around food and agriculture. Um, I would like to share these videos to your friends, your followers, you know, and um, other people who this our discourse on a weekly basis will be of important or immense benefit to. So I will quickly invite our guest for today, um, who is going to be soil fertility. Hi, Isaiah. Thank you for joining. Isaiah Amadi, thank you for joining. I see your works. Azuka, my man, I see you. CV Multi Services Nigeria Limited. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. So I've invited our guest. Um, she'll be here in a minute. We just spoke um, a couple of minutes ago. So as soon as she joins us, we will right on the subject so how are you guys doing how has the day been put it up in the comment section tell me how has the day been how have you been kicking it before we start the video all right let, let me um accept azuka first let me bring azuka on board uh, let's have some quick chats before our guest joins us today Oh, I see that uh, I see that um, our guest is unable to join. Let me see how I can make that work. Hi, Azuka. Um, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get you in. Uh, please accept it so that you can join the live video. Azuka, all right. Thank you so much, um, Freaky, for joining. Azuka, you may have to um, mute yourself or leave the video so that um, Freaky can um, come right on board. Yes, I think this is the best um, position for you. Put your phone on portraits. It will be the best position for our conversation today. Thank you, sir, John Kingsley, for joining. So, um, Frankie, I think you need to put your phone on portrait. Turn it, um, yeah. yes, 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 this is the best position. So just move it uh, close to you so that we can see you very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi. How are you? Hi. Um, I, I, think this is good. I think this is good. Um, so we can kick it from here, right? So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I, I brought in somebody special to talk to us today, a registered soy scientist, so that we can talk on conversations around soy fertility, get to understand some of the basic meat. You know, people usually take note of what type of seeds to plant. They will tell you, no, plant hybrid seed is the best, right? They, when it fails, they attribute all failure to hybrid seeds without considering the soil. People generally just assume that our soil is rich and fertile, but they don't know if the, the soil is reducing the required nutrients by, to the crops, right? They just feel like if they want to add anything about soil if they want to do anything about soil all they need to do is to either add manure or add fertilizer to it to have a very soil right so before we jump right in i would like you to introduce yourself to the audience so that it gets to know meet you and then we can kick it from there okay 
Thank you, Mr. Alfred. It's a pleasure to come on live. It's very exciting. Thank you. It's very interesting. I Thank really you, want to appreciate you for yeah, I really want to appreciate you for making this push. It's it's unique. I you know you're making this collaboration very realistic. Yeah. At the time that everybody feels they can do on their own, uh, they can succeed on their own. Uh, but you are trying to break that niche, and I sincerely want to tell you that I am right behind you. Because yeah. collaboration will make the advocacy and get so heck and so wide. Yes. So that, you know, the world today right now is facing a whole lot of food crisis. Sincerely, I want to appreciate you. I'm not taking this for granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Uh, right after me, my name is Lifreki Ebu. I am a registered soil scientist, not just registered, I am a practicing soil scientist. Awesome. I, I practice soil scientist as a profession, you know, privately. So I have been in this for like five years. I got licensed last year by the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science and also the Soil Science Society of Nigeria. And then right. I have my license, to and then I I am with Fresla Agro Consults, my own brain work, because I saw the need to bridge the knowledge gap in the agricultural sector. Yeah, you know, people believe agriculture is what everybody can do, is what everybody can practice. Yeah. Yes, I agree with them. But right now, we are moving from the conventional way of farming to the commercialized way of farming. Because as you see, population is increasing. Yes, the way that our first farming cannot sustain us. Yeah. So by that, that knowledge gap needs to be breached. And that is why choice size as a profession carried up specifically by a few of us to make the world know that soil is the bedrock of any crop production. Oh. So that is who I am. I am proudly a soil scientist. Hashtag global soil Thank you. <laughs> well done, well done. I, I, I saw your works actually, and because I studied agriculture, I, I there was a particular post that you did. Um somebody in the comment said, Tell your lady we will work together, right? So so another question for you. And we have not even started the subject. Right, we're not happening at all, but collaboration is happening right away. Yeah. So, um, so I, there's this your post I saw on Facebook where you you were doing a soil test, and when I saw it, and because I studied agriculture in school, I was immediately drawn to the post and said, "Who is this person in this space?" Because most times people are doing academics and they are not practicing. I saw that you were practicing. I said, "No, I will need to have this person." live with me so that we can have conversations around soil fertility so i would like you to tell us some of the myth or general belief that people have about soil and soil fertility that is really not true if you know any what belief do you think that yeah. people have generally yeah, one, one, one. me you know you can imagine when your child gets back to tell you that ah dad i want to study soil science and he begins to wonder what's that what does that mean? Where do they work? What does it entail? Yes. And then the industry like, ah, soil, soil, ah, what's there? There's nothing much there in soil. And then one of the myths is that, you know, it's only for soil testing, it's only for professional farmers. Right. Another myth is that, ah, soil, it doesn't mean anything, just soil now, nothing. They have not actually understood that soil is a living entity. You know, they just take it as one of those things that they grew to see by created by nature. And as such, another myth is why am I so particular about uh, taking care of the soil? But what is it with soil? Just soil. And you know, um, another myth is uh, any soil wala is MPK. I just had to fertilize the art, poultry, cardio. Everything is good to go. Those are meats. And then the, the, the most recent, the most recent that I've come across is someone telling you, mm, sorry, now just do soy pH. 
Uh, don't repeat that one. I don't want to These are meat that right. are not true. That are not true. They are deeper They are. Soul is a whole entity. Is a living entity. It's a living entity. I, I think that that's a very powerful word, right? I remember in school, I don't want to speak jargon for, for our audience. I remember in school, we talked about soil fiona and soil flora, right? Sure. And, and yeah. people need to understand that soil is a living entity. So, so yeah. at, at this point, if you notice, even I, who studied agriculture in school, when I was about to take off my first crop farm, in 2016 or thereabouts, we didn't bother to do soil test, right? And it was later, in my later years, that I now understood that if you need to do soil test, you are even doing soil test according to a particular crop, right? How important, how important is soil test to a farmer? Let's narrow it down to a small older farmer who intends to make the most of his or her crops and make maximum profit. You know, like I said, soil is a, a living entity. And when you understand that soil is a living entity, you also understand that soil needs to be fed. It has to be fed properly, not just being fed. Right. Because right. soil is like you give it in and give take it out. Hmm. Your soil cannot be sick. And you expect to bring in healthy seeds. You just bury it there. It will become a grave for the seed rather than a, 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 a bait for good. Right. So we understand that a, 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 a living entity, you manage it one. Soil contains water. Soil contains what we call a species. Soil also contains what we call the organic matter. Soil has a proportion of the mineral matter which constitutes yeah. the parent material of which the soil was formed from. And when you identify that, you know that soil can breathe. So when your soil cannot breathe, the fauna you talked about, the flora you talked about, cannot yeah. exist. And these are the workers in the soil. Right. Especially the, the flora, the fauna, those living entities, those ants, caterpillar, um, a worm, all of those things are soil workers. Mm. And when your soil is not healthy, those things cannot function. Yeah. So, as a, as a new farmer or a small older farmer, you should understand what you are doing to your soil to either make your soil ready to accept the seed, nurture the seed, give it an opportunity to grow and make the yield. By so doing, one of those things you will not do when you know that soil is an entity, is to burn it. When you burn something, is it still alive? No. So we understand first of all that soil is a living thing. It breathes. Yeah. Soil dies. Soil eats. Yeah. Soil grows. Right. So, <laughs> idea first will now give you the art the to manage your soil at your level. Right. For that crop to grow and yield. So, at, at the level of a small dam farmer, eh, let's explain soil fertility first in, uh, in its literal sense or meaning. What is soil fertility in its literal sense or meaning to a small dam farmer? Soil fertility to the layman. I'll just put a few words. To a layman, is the ability of your soil to produce and release nutrients for your crop to take off. And that involves a whole lot. There is a mechanism that goes through in the soil. Awesome. So for it to be healthy or fertile, means that it has the required nutrients the crop needs and the soil is ready and has the capability also to release them because it's one thing for the soil to have the required nutrients yeah and it's another thing for the soil to release it thank, they have thank you so like so, them. so so let's let, so what about what about if the soil in itself right is very rich this soil is rich, 
why is the soil not releasing the wealth of nutrients that it has to the crop that is planted on that particular soil? What are the things that are impeding the soil from releasing our nutrients? Number one of such case is a pH. Is what? Dirt is a pH. Right. Soil pH. Yeah. That's the acidity or the humidity of the soil. That's your labor. Now, there are crops that all crops thrive at different pH soil level. And then at those soil pH level, it is expected that the major nutrient elements needed by that crop is released where this soil tends to be either acidic or alkaline the tendency for one nutrient to inhibit mm -hmm. the release of another very high it, yeah it shows that are acidic nitrogen that may be available may not be released or a uh, potassium or phosphorus if there is acidic content of the soil Phosphorus remain in it. They say no phosphorus, but it will not be released. Because all these nutrients are released in soluble forms. Right. So when the soil becomes acidic, the availability of those nutrients is very minimal. So in that case, you know that okay, your wala is salt pH. You look for a way to normalize the soil pH. Now there are other issues whereby the soil is either waterlogged. It does not mm -hmm. allow air in enter into the soil. And there are some elements that need the component of oxygen to break it down. So when the water is locked, the, the element that is also be released in a very airy soil is not also there, it is also inhibited. Right. So there are a lot of factors. Also, soil moisture. There are some soils that are sandy in nature, more of sand than loam. There are yeah. some soils we call sandy loam or clay loam. When the soil becomes very sandy, you realize that it has not retained enough moisture. Mm -hmm. And the nutrients in the soil will not be taken up by plants in the form of a dry. Uh, uh, whatever, like cake or bread. No, it has to be soluble that the root zone of the crop can take it. So, what amount of water is retained in your soil? So, that's right. still a concern. Those factors inhibit the release. That's why you see people say, I've added a lot of MPK. MPK every year, MPK. Most times, also, excess application of this unrecommended fertilizer also causes a threat to the release of the nutrients because you are confusing the soil. The soil has the quantity of nitrogen or calcium needed by the crop and you don't care about adding extra. So the soil that is confused. Am I <laughs> going on? Yeah. <laughs> <You> are... <laughs> so instead of the soil to do what it does, it will just be there. Right. Because also this nutrient also has effects on the soil animals that also break down these elements. We have the uh, fungi, we have the bacteria, that also works in favor of the soil. So when right. this nutrient becomes higher, they de de deactivate the ability of this uh, of, of micro organisms in the soil to work, either by killing some of them or rendering them useless. So it's, right. a bit, it's a bit a complex thing in the soil. That's why we say soil is a living entity. Like human right. beings, think when you overfed yourself, you know how uncomfortable you can be. You'll be very restless. Because as, have his, as a farmer, as a farmer, I have I have witnessed cases where we gave, we in fact we we added a lot of manure, and you know there's the popular opinion that poultry manure. Or poultry droppings is the best that you should apply, especially after, um, especially after the the acid or the gas is out of the manure, right? So it is very rich. And so we we'll store manure and make sure that the manure is dry. If you put your hand inside, we we'll do a small test. If you put your hand inside, the manure is not hot again. It's cool, 
right? And then we apply it to the soil and then we mix it. And at the end of the day, with hybrid seeds and everything, we still are not getting the required yield, right? So it may be, from what you said now, it may be that the moisture content is not enough. It, that's why the, that particular seed didn't do well. It may also be that some of the micronutrients that are contained in the manual may be fed in excess into the soil. And so the soil is receiving a wrong signal and they cannot re release its nutrients. Am I, am I right? You're right, but I, I want to uh, point out something there. All right. You know, we have to find the fertilizer, the chemical right. one, yeah. and this spot and the other rest. Organic, now, yeah. The protein and the other you applied. When did you apply it? Did you apply it maybe weeks before planting? No, after uh, planting. A week or two after planting. Now, Micro uh, poultry manual breaks down slowly and then releases the yeah. nutrients slowly over a long period of time. Now, take for instance, you planted cucumber that matures in 35 to 40 days, yeah. and then you now apply to the organic manual five days after planting or one week after planting. Mm -hmm. It will not give you that result because it has to undergo a, a lot of uh, decomposition process in the soil right. and they start releasing the nutrients gradually and then what the nutrient might be released by the way you are harvesting and that's when you now start seeing that oh this 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 crop looks uh, very greenish it's really to yield when it's, it has gone to the peak of yield that's when you now start seeing your leaves very greenish at that point show that that is when the nutrient is released so for you to have the best of organic Manuring, you do that like two weeks before planting. So two upon weeks. planting, yes, upon planting, it has decomposed. It has undergone the decomposition procedures and all what it needs to do to break down the nutrients to make it available for the roots. So by the time you just planting, your crops are now germinating, coming out. They will have what to feed on. So in four weeks, five weeks, you see your your crops doing well. And that's why we also encourage people to do what we call the integrated management, where you can combine the uh, chemical and this, depending on your surface result, so that you know what proportion you are adding. So that when the chemical fertilizer washes uh, up very fast, because that will break down very fast, it now gives way for the sustainability by the or that manual that would now sustain your crop over a long period of time. They will have a lot to feed up. So you can see that right. in your growing season, your crops is still looking healthy. That means the soil is releasing its nutrients at that pace. But when you plant and then come to add poultry or other manual to have results, uh, I don't think it's not possible. So that, that's why you add that. So I want you to, I want you to speak to. Oh, oh, Bookie Farmer is asking integrated word, madam. So I wanted to speak to, I wanted to speak to um, um, commercial farmers, right? Commercial yeah. farmers who is who especially uses um, um, what's the word? who use um, or inorganic fertilizer all the time. They use inorganic fertilizer all the time, and then their as soil acidity increases, right? As the soil acidity increases, yeah. this, this, will, this will now reduce the productivity of the new sets that that person is going to have in the future. I want you to speak to it. How can they manage that soil acidity and reduce it to a level where it will create sustainability for the soil and for other crops. Uh, for those commercial farmers, at that point, yes. because at some point, they will notice a, a decline in their yield. Oh, God. Right. They will notice. Uh, it's fine. It's one. It's fine. It's one hundred percent fine. Nepa is uh, Nepa is a thing in Nigeria. <laughs> yes. 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 So, 
They will notice a decline in their production yeah. when they constantly apply this fertilizers. Yeah. What they do in that in that situation, if they notice it, let them do a soil test. Right. How will identify? How will identify which of the nutrients is in excess? Yeah. That is probably inhibiting the availability of another. And then they can regulate it from there. If it's so, if the acidity is high, maybe it's acidic. Hmm. Lightning is recommended. Also, depending on their choice of crops, so that we also know if that crop needs the components in the lime, because in every lime we have calcium and magnesium. Yes. So in in soils that will have calcium already and is inhibited by the presence of maybe acidic. And then you're not bringing another excess calcium. It's, it's a problem. So first of all, for them to identify that, let soil test be done. Let the true picture of the soil be shown. The diagnosis is open. From there, you now detect what to do. But the problem is, are they willing to, to apply this knowledge? Because they are looking for ways to be very quick. In having a very robust uh, crop growth, uh, my crop is doing very well vegetatively. But when it comes to the yield, you have nothing. So, so they have to take it. That's why this advocacy, I have always been on it over time. Right. I keep saying on radio anywhere that soil tests cannot be overemphasized. The yes, same way we go to the rock, and then the doctor, before they diagnose any ailment, They'll give you varieties of tests to work. Yeah. Yes. And then when these the results, they can actually identify the root cause of that ailment and then treat the root cause and not the symptoms. So what most commercial farmers do these days are to keep they keep treating the symptoms of the effects of this excess uh, fertilization rather than treating the roots. At times, the root cause may not be expensive to handle as compared to the symptoms that are trying to. Right. So for them to identify that cause, soil test is a, a solution giver at that point. And then I also... On the I, want to I want to ask, is soil test, is soil test expensive? Is this something that any farmer, any day, any time, can look at their yield and say, I think we can do better. I think I want to go about it this way. You know, I think, let's, let's, I want to do soil test for my one hectare land, my five hectare land, my 10 hectare land, or even one acre or two plots of land. Is it affordable for the smallholder farmer? Yes, it's very affordable. It's very affordable. The same way farmers bring out money to buy hybrid seeds. I you understand? Yeah. Yes. The same mindset they should have about soil. So without soil, we can't grow crops. Yes, soil soilless farming is in book. But soilless farming cannot cater for our staple crops. In True. Nigeria, our staple crops are rice, yam. Soilless farmer will not do much. Soil is the big deal for crops. So the same way farmers will bring out 63,000 right like now to buy a hybrid pack of pepe to grow. Yeah. They can yeah. afford to the 100,000 to do soil test for a hectare, depending on their choice of crop, because the choice of crop determines the number of samples to be taken on a plot. And yeah, that's something you do every year. Your soil results report can last you for a period of four or five years. Then you can now okay. come back to check. Is there an improve, improvement on my soil? If your soil was degraded. So it's not something you do merely. But you can follow up from the recommendation of the soil testing. You can follow up on the management routine for a period of two, three years. Yeah. And then maybe like after five years, you can come back and check. Is there an improvement? Or which definitely there will be. So, this is for them to also see soil testing as important as their seeds. If yeah. the water is the high, you buy. 
If you like import it from anywhere in the world, if your soil is sick, you will see it without wasting If your soil is like you have been, if you are sick, you are not productive. You can't achieve anything yeah. as a sick person. So when your soul is sick, you can't do anything. That's why on my status on Facebook, I said, do you know your soul health status? You need to know how healthy your soul Can my soul absorb water? At what level can it absorb? For how long can it retain moisture and nutrients? Is it poorly drained? That as soon as water enters, it washes off, washes down the lid. Almost immediately. Almost immediately. How do I improve on the soil? Am I still bush burning? Am I doing bush burning year in, year out? For every soil that is bush burning, it takes another five to ten years to recover that soil. Right. It takes about five to ten years to recover that soil. So what am I am I disturbing the soil anyhow? As a living entity, what am I doing to it? What am I doing? Am I maltreating it? Okay, in soil, anything good. No, you don't have that possibility you're looking for. But you can have one hectare of land and then you manage your soil well. You can be making this money from that one hectare. And people will be amazed what's going on. Because you right. are, we will apply the principles of soil fertility. They are principles. Our people should get to the point that they understand that for every venture you go into, there are principles that must be imbibed. If those right. principles are broken, nothing is working. Nothing is working. True. Okay, so, um, so let us address some of the principles right i have i have some other questions i wanted to ask you but since we are here let us look at as a farmer who is farming access to land is a challenge first even though we don't most people don't agree but access to land is a challenge right so as a farmer who intends to use a particular plot of land for the longest of time what are some of the principles that we can employ to maintain soil fertility to continually give us the best, you know, at all times. First of all, in that case, we encourage crop rotation. Right. If in the first year you grew cereals, take on year, you should follow it up with a legume. The legume now will have the ability to fix nitrogen for you. That was lost during harvest of the previous cereal because most cereal crops are heavy feeders like maize is a heavy feeder maybe after growing maize you can now supplement it with uh, legume any legume that is fit for that region for that location or another crop like uh, potato which will give you uh, an access to the cover cropping where the surface of the soil is not bare so that excess where these splashes will not wash away the topsoil. You know, the, the covering of leaves on the ground which protects the soil surface from the direct effect of raindrops. So when you have these uh, interchanging uh, procedures ongoing on the same plot for a three-year uh, period, you are not having your soil, you are doing better. Because say, for instance, if you grow corn, this year, the fertilizer you would need for uh, that one will not be the same you would need for legume. Mm -hmm. yeah. so there will be no chances of over application of a certain nutrient. Right. Is that understanding? Yes, yes. Right. So you yes. don't balance it up. By that process of crop rotation, you are not balancing your uh, soil health you know now whatever it was lacking in the previous year can now be available in the right, right you're not cool. so in school that time I, I think i remember and this is secondary school agriculture by the way they will tell you okay. deep rooted crop followed by shallow rooted crop and they will always that tell you nitrogen fixers followed by nitrogen users so if we are, if right. we are planting granules 
uh, this uh, season. By next season, we should be planting maybe maize, yeah. something that consumes yeah. nitrogen. Yeah. And yeah. the next yeah. season, we yeah. now cultivate something that fixes nitrogen into the soil, right? I, I think we, we have a fundamental challenge to handle because, um, because one of the things that farmers care about is profits. And this is why we abuse the soil and then at the end of the we wouldn't even think of soil fertility or soil health. We just try to plant as much as possible because all we care about is that, oh, we have market for maize, for example, uh, or we have market for cassava. And we grow cassava in that plot of land year in, year out. The year that we notice that the cassavas, their leaves are not coming out well, or the, for the maize, their leaves are not coming out well, we simply put in inorganic fertilizer to turn out, you know, the best results as possible, right? How can we balance that, particularly the fact that we don't have access to land? What can a farmer who would love to, what can a farmer who would love to, um, handle their soil in the best way possible what can they do in that sense considering the fact that they need to make money and continually plant a particular crop what other measures can they employ well another measure they can employ in that case away from soil is to what identify their seeds that can do well within a short period and then also understand the dynamics of planting distances. Now, like in cassava, if, if you are growing cassava for the roots, huh, the planting distances are different from people who grow cassava for the stem. Are you aware of that? That farmers who just grow cassava for the stem, they sell out the stem. If they have roots, it's just extra profit. So if you understand their needs, right. you know, farmers want to make money from a whole lot of things and not have a firm grip of a particular thing. You cannot grow, you cannot want to grow cassava for both them and the roots, and then make that massive profit. Because the two of those needs have different uh, principles. You understand? See, they have to understand their need. What am I into? And then go for, even if it is an informal two days, three days, one week training on the fundamentals of this thing. Our people, most of us, don't want to take knowledge before going to agriculture or farming venture. They just feel they can try by somebody's. Uh, suggestion of what they did on their own. Not knowing that no two soil, for example, are the same. Even yeah. when they are within the same land, soils are heterogeneous in nature. They are not homogeneous in nature. So when you now take the solution someone had and now bring to yours, it may not work. True. So they have to understand it. They have to go for training. At least have a little knowledge. No what to do and when to do them. Agriculture is a science. That yeah. means there are technicalities to it. Agriculture is an art. It therefore means there is a pattern to it. So yeah. you combine technicality and pattern, you definitely make your profit. I have consulted for clients who have sunk in money to do it the right way. Let me sit down and make seek as money coming back to them. But well, when you put up this technicality and the pattern needed, you don't make it. You are told to apply MPK to the laser seven days after planting at the so so depth, at so 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 quantity. And, and then you now went to the farm two weeks after to apply the same MPK when the crop are already started. They have developed a tendency to do without that fertilizer. And now, when right. you're not bringing it, when you're not bringing it, they'll just be doing one, two, three with it now. So, you have to follow this principle. If you want to make money as a, a small older farmer, know what you're doing, know how to do it, and know it.
So, so I want you to shed light. On I want to set, shed light on something that you said because, <laughs> hey God, <laughs> you know I do consulting too, right? <laughs> and one of the one of the critical things that you just spoke to now, and this happens to the rich and the poor, so it's a problem of attitude. Is that we don't follow timelines. We are supposed to apply for this crop. It may be two months after planting. This other crop, it may be apply fertilizer two weeks after planting. Right? These are just simple, basic secondary square agriculture. However, look at the challenge here. However, we may now observe. We may now observe that the the farmer who has money is not willing to spend money on fertilizers right now, or the farmer who doesn't, who is out there in the street hustling on how to get money to buy fertilizer is not feeding their crop with the particular nutrient that they desire you mentioned a key word that i want you to expand on you said the crop may develop the ability to do without the nutrient right and if the crop develops that ability to do without the nutrient maybe at the end of the day the crop will not um grow to its fullest potential and when you supply the nutrients they will still live as if the nutrients are not available please shed more light on that like i said go back to my first uh hit point that soil is a living entity right now hit yourself as human you are very starved you are famished you're very hungry and then you are you are aware you should eat by 8 a.m. and then uh, 8 a.m. pass no food, 9 a.m. pass you will be struggling. You know how it feels now. You will be so eager to eat. You was very you are so eager. 10 o'clock, no food. 11, you are still very. By 12 one, the thought of that hunger. You be angry. I just forget about because of that hunger. I have little to that. So now when you don't find out this thing, you will lose appetite. It is yes. At a certain point of uh, any application of anything, manure, pesticide, or anything, there is a tendency for that crop at that point for absorption and response. Right. Because at that point, the fertilizer is going to the root at the required form. Now, we are not bringing it probably maybe a week after, and by this week after, there is no moisture in the soil. You are now applying the fertilizer, you are living in there. How will it decompose? How will the crop now pick it up? So, if it, it becomes a waste, and now this crop will try and try to, like, you know, just be, and they won't do anything. Okay, if you go back to my Facebook page, uh, so at last, uh, this is June, I think April. You know, between March and April 10th week, we had a dry spell in my place. Now, people right. who grew corn, some their corn didn't do well. And one of those persons attacked me. And then that was, I supplied it with the stems. The cassava was doing very well, but the corn didn't do well. Even when he had applied the required fertilizer, because he is an agriculturist too, so he knows these things. So when I brought it to Facebook, he now asked a question. Why did the maize not do well and the cassava do well? Now, he had applied MPK normal requirement. At that point, the dry spell did not allow the fertilizer applied to dissolve for the crop, the maize crop, to take. Remember, maize is a very heavy feeder. If you yeah. start a the maize, they will grow they will bring out castle, but they will not give you any good uh, yield. Yield, yeah. All like Sahara that has the, the, the tolerance to drought, because Sahara maintain its growth, depending when there will be water to break down uh, the nutrients, you know, but it was able to scavenge for moisture, for sustainability. What did cassava do in that case? It reduced its production of new leaves. You know, the production that will need more moisture and food. So cassava would reduce the production of the leaves, pending when there will be moisture <laughs> for it to dissolve its nutrients that he had noticed is in the soil. So the two crops 
express different attitude or attributes on the same land. So it's the same thing. Timely application of these things are very, very important. So the awesome. you meet Okay, so so as a farmer, what are some of the if I want to plant fresh, you know, fresh planting, what are some of the parameters I should look out for? What are some of the parameters I should look out for in my soil as a farmer that wants to plant a fresh? A whole, whole lot of parameters. A whole lot of parameters. One of such parameters is the pH level. Another what is the nutrient content? Okay. We have about 17, 16, 16 to 17 in crop nutrients that are divided into major elements and uh, uh, micro elements. We also look at the soil texture. The soil texture is very important. Is this soil grass? Does it have a fine sand? Do, is it clay? Does it have silk? What proportion of these components makes up this soil? We have three components in every soil texture. We have the sand, we have the silt, and we have the clay. So the proportions of these components determine your soil texture. And that will also determine the capillarity of this soil. We also look at soil. We have other factors that are technically they may not understand. There is only a certain that can be sufficient for them after the result. We all what we call the aggregate stability. How stable are your soil particles under pressure? We talk about the voltage. We talk about the electric conductivity, electrical conductivity. There are a whole lot of parameters. So right. not just what index, what every conductor we have said. I said he wants to do soil test. I said, okay. He said, uh, okay, I want to change the soil field. I said, don't worry. Uh, well, come back from the sample. He said that he's there with the sample that he used his hand and scooped his hand <laughs> and brought. So when I asked him, he that showed me, he said, what's more than that? I laughed first, but I'm like, no, this is not what he's done. I will need to come to the field and then uh, pick my samples, my way here ways of sampling yeah. that give us an insight to all these parameters because yeah. when you wrongly sample them you cannot analyze them and you cannot have your results like one mm -hmm. of the other another time I told I said okay that he tasted the soil with his tongue and he didn't have plenty salt <laughs> so these are, are the sorts of people feel they can do you know, because the porous nature of agri sector has made people uh, disregard the professionals in those fields. But that's right. why we stand. we keep making them understand the profitability as far as crop is concerned. Your soil comes first. Your seed comes second. Your agronomic practices come first. Soil seeds come second, agronomic yeah. practices come second. That's the highlight. You cannot bring crops at that seed that grain, and then you don't know whether your soil is supporting and, that crop. The farmer pays so much attention to the seeds ah, and so much attention to the agronomic practices. And, and ignores the soil. The soil. So, so there's this formula. There's this formula that I coined, um, and it's applicable everywhere, right? Uh, but I use it especially for livestock. Genetics, okay. which is your seed now. Genetics, yeah. which is your seed, plus environment, which is your soil, yeah. plus good management. Is equal to profit. So if okay. you are all for in profit, make sure that that for that gene to express itself, the gene needs the right environment, which is the soil, to release the nutrients and the water that is.
required for that particular seed to express its gene to the fullest potential right and then you now need human effort which is your routine management practice to get the best yield that you need for your crops right and yeah. i want to agree with you on this i think this is very very professional and it works all the time now if farmers want to do their soil tests are there um small technology or equipments that you can recommend that they can use yeah, there was one we tried to uh, bring out at the society, that is the Soil Science Society of Nigeria. Uh, but you see, the normal human uh, attitude uh, has actually kind of not made that thing really uh, reliable. Right. Because people right. that started using that to dupe a couple of the farmers. What we did there was just an elementary uh, tool. Test kit, we call it test kit, very elementary, where you check the moisture level, uh, uh, probably the pH, and then two nutrients, the NPK. But you know that that is very shallow. That will not yeah. give you the true picture. Cross true. like a tree from like oil palm, cocoa, and other deep nutrient crops, do more with micronutrients. That right. I did it probably the past one or two years. So those test kits cannot uh, uh, cannot really um, handle that. So for the small other farmers, they can use that, but they shouldn't really base that uh, use base their uh, recommendations or their management based on that. Because right. even that moisture. They will not identify what kind of texture the soil is and why the moisture is low. So you still see that they still need once in a while a soil test, a comprehensive soil test for it. All right. They so let me, for it. let me let me ask you these very important questions. There are a lot of people. Please, if you are here live, I like you to put up your questions on the comment section, and I'm going to read it out to her so that she can take it but i'm going to ask you one question how much does it take to test a sample and how many samples do we need to test in one acre or one hectare so if we want to reach out to you and say please we have heard the gospel and we want to do what is right i want to get the best of yield out of that hybrid seed that we are cultivating in fact let me put it in context in nigeria in Nigeria, I think we are doing about between between six to nine tons of maize per hectare. Abroad, they are doing some countries are doing twenty five tons per hectare, right? Meaning they understand the soil, they understand the place of environment, climatic and soil requirements in your secondary school. They understand the place of environment, and then they understand the place of hybrid seed. And they're able to get a lot more yield per unit area or per space right how much will it take you to do a comprehensive soil test for us for per sample or um and how many samples do you need to do in one acre or one hectare um uh, for a farmer okay uh, we don't really have a fixed uh, number of uh, samples right we we, we check for analysis. There are features we look out for for the land okay. that will determine the number of samples we take. For instance, there are some land that are nearly flat. You can understand what I'm saying there? Yeah. Are flat. Now you say the, the terrain is neither sloppy, there is no valley there is no crest uh there is no another thing that will determine the number of samples is the vegetation what we cite on the land if we have very features of the land samples can increase but when we have homogeneity of the features on the land the samples will also be limited and also choice of crop what are you growing there right the choice of crop the depth we sample because not every crop carries the same depth. Yes, that's true. Crops that go down up to 60 cm. 
70. Yeah. There are some that just do, uh, do within uh, 40 cm. So all these parameters, you know, uh, form basis for the number of samples. And right now, I cannot categorically get it to say how much we charge per sample because of variation in laboratories. Yeah. Yes. Variation in the laboratories and your location of sending uh, of doing the lab analysis. But yeah. uh, it's not lesser than 5,000 or so per sample. Right. So, so that charge list, depending also on the parameters you are assessing. Yeah. Okay. So there's no fixed uh, stuff for it. But putting up all these modalities, or oh, yes, all these modalities, you can now identify how much it will cost. But it's cost friendly. It's cost anybody that wants to, like my slogan for my business, for my friend, Fraser Agro Consult, we help you do profitably. Anybody that is ready to make money from agriculture, who, yeah. who think they need that fund, agri business is capital intensive. It is. You don't want to do money with agri, and then you want to reap. It is not a money. A, it's not a money. For the poor. It's not for the poor. <laughs> it's, not for the, it's not for the poor too, but the poor can still do it. Yes, you start true. small and go from there. You understand the terrain. Don't go and grow a crop that climatically it won't favor you. You will spend more money in input. If you know your climate around you doesn't support heat, don't go forcing it to grow there. You run yeah. into losses. Do what is peculiar to your terrain, your soil environment. And your climatic environment, you spend less, and then you can make more money. And then, like that conversation I talked about, if you rotate your crops by so doing, the prevalence uh, yes, around that environment will be altered. The chain will be altered. So yeah. it will also reduce your cost of production. When your cost of production is reduced, your profitability. Is guaranteed. So when True. you understand this dynamic, it is time farmers wake up. Like the present food crisis we are having today, if every region participated in farming, I don't think we will be here. So but if we just let everything for one zone or the other, and at some point this will happen. Then for instance, where you come from. They can do cassava very well. Please yeah. to cassava. And then you produce a lot of cassava. The demand will not outweigh the supply. And definitely, the principle of demand and supply will not play out. You always yes. demand higher than supply. The price will definitely be affected. If you do not, the way demand is lower than the supply, what happens to the price? It comes Dogs. down. Yes. But for at this equilibrium, where the price either goes up or down, means that the demand equates supply, or the supply equates demand. So we should get to that point where supply equates demand. Automatically, the prices will be equal, if you have a common market for it. Right. So that's just the principle that we should not be neglected. So, so guys, let me use this opportunity to say this. There is a resource out there that um, that shows the different crops and livestock that you can grow all across Nigeria. It's from Federal Ministry of Agriculture. You can get, get it because I'm just trying to emphasize a point that she made that is very vital. Grow what is peculiar to your area. Most times, because we see some fancy things and we want to force them into our own locale, we end up trying to manipulate the soil and the environment in a way. But that too is limited. It is very limited. So look at the agroecological um, zones that we have in Nigeria and the crops and livestock that have been recommended for those zones. And then always, always seek to grow the crops that can do very well in your locale. 
instead of looking at what other people are doing in other locations and trying to force, you know, certain crops that will not do very well or optimally, as we say it in agriculture, in your locale. So before we draw the curtain, it's about an hour right now. Before we draw the curtain, I would like you to, I would like you to say some. Um, okay, so there's this thing that happens to me, so that you can say it very well. Sometimes I, I just need a platform to express myself to change the attitudes of farmers toward a particular food, right? Or something I want them to adopt. What is that needed change or attitude that you would love to see in farmers and you want people across Nigeria, across Africa to adopt and to do always as it regards well, to soil well, science? Like, 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 I've always said it. I have always said it. Uh, there is no short cut to all of this. Right. Uh, most farmers want to go through short cut to, to get to where they want to. It is it's not done. If it's not it, then it is not it. Right. Doing it right might take time. Doing it right might take resources. But the the outcome of it, the outcome of it will be better for you. That's where you make money. That's why people ask the working guys why they are feeling as those guys only principle Right. But even even when they are not men and expressively, but they know it chemical or what to apply at their crop at a particular time. They don't be sick. That's why they are able to reduce so far what they are producing. So you can imagine the other part of the country also supporting with that same energy. We will not be well done. Yeah, this true. The government have, have a new approach. Times have changed. Yeah, they, true. They should invite the, the, the new way of doing things. I remember somebody contacted me what I said. All these scientists are just it. Our grandfather is not the scientist. And there were three people. There was not much. Other, other, uh, what population were there? Yes. How many farmlands did your father, your father school? They owned a lot of farmlands. That they were able to cultivate every year and have what to eat. They were still subsistence farmers, and they are only able to sell very little. Their family were able to feed them. But to do, issue of land fragmentation has made a lot of people not really going to farms, which has been sponsored by some of us who wants to share in the inheritance. Yes. I fragmented most of you their forefathers' land. That they were using. I think I can ask them, are you aware that your forefathers took care of their sons more than we do? Have you watched your girl before before ash and they apply to them? All, all the ash of their people goes to their plastic. Yeah. That was time they applied. The job yeah. that they didn't really need from home, but that was time they applied. Then on their vegetable tables, they will do something inviting their vegetable or eating it up. They will just carry us and sprinkle on them. That was science they implemented. Then they right. get to plant oil palm. They will go and carry the old bunches of oil palm fruits that they have harvested that have decayed. Burn it, carry the ash, hold it on cup. That is potash. That is the raw form of potassium that we are trying to be to realize that that was that was science. So when you look at our forefathers that we want to talk, because they didn't read books, they were doing even more better than us. Right. They allowed their students to be fit. They knew when their themselves were not doing well. They did crop rotation. They did good power following. Those are scientific principles. That they put it in place. So our farmers who want to turn the face of agriculture today should invite the necessary innovations that are in place. It's just 
take it down. I'll set off as well as as the as the environment. That is why they have a uh, ways to use the media on their content as boldly because you know this innovation contributes to health hazards, even up to, to our water bodies. So yeah. they should take some with us. All these things. That's why there are different directions for use. They should leave the less way of doing things. If you still fall back to them, they will save you and make you do profit. As long as we do that, I don't know if you have a bunch of stuff. I know it's true, it's true, this is true that. I get a client on Tuesday. He was a very hard one, he spent money for 18 hectares and lost out. What did he plan to plan to plan? Planting, right? Never knew that it was a need to do a short term before going back to so, 18 hectares. 18 hectares is about multiply 10,000 by 13. That should be a whole lot of square feet. But mm. he brought in high price and under the grew, they all grew very well and stayed for two years without using a bond. That was a clear indication of soil inefficiency. And we were not often entering into agriculture again. Something he was our avoid. So these are the things I will encourage others out there. The same way you will hustle for the good thing, hustle for a healthy soul. Right. As somebody said, we are going to talk about something in agriculture. We are in this stuff. Yeah, that's right. We are a farmer, not a gambler. That's beautiful. One of your viewers commented. Okay. That's nice. Right. Oh, I am living. That's a good one. That's a good one there. Be a farmer, not a gambler. Right. Be an investor, not a spectator. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you for your time today. I am really grateful to have you here today. And um, I hope that uh, people from this call and even people who are going to watch this video um, some other time we're able to reach out to you. So I am she's the CEO of Freshly Agro Consult. You can reach out to her on Fresa, sorry, Fresa Agro Consult. You can reach out to her on Instagram via DM or Freki Endu, right? Or ND, Freki ND. Yes, So you can reach out to her at any time that you want to discuss anything about soil science. Thank you, AY Alimi, for joining, and thank you, everyone on the call. Buki Farmer, thank you, I see you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Next week, we are going to have um, yet another guest next week, and we're going to be discussing something really important as it relates to why. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for putting it online. Fresla Freki uh, at Fresla Freki on Instagram, and we're going to be discussing on why farms are folding up in Nigeria and what we can do about it. Right. Thank you guys for joining, and we will see you. Thank you so much, um, Freki, for coming. Uh, thank you for educating yeah. our people. I hope that we are able to do this more and more and more. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. I All right, guys. I hope this yes was recorded. Yes, um, it's going to be here on Instagram, and I'm also going to upload it on YouTube, right? Okay. All right. And also, I would need to have a share of it. All right. When I upload it on Instagram, I think I will. I will check if I can make you a collaborator so that it will also appear on your page. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye.